Hello dear listeners. This is the summary of the lesson 3 for the third quarter 2023. Many thanks to our subscribers for your support. If this is the first time to watch this channel, please subscribe and click on thumbs up icon to like this video so that you can be notified when a new video is released. The topic of this lesson. The power of the exalted Jesus. The key text of this lesson is found in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. Through the Holy Spirit, believers may know what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe, according to the working of His mighty power which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places. Most humans want something more powerful than they already own. Many people want faster, more powerful cars. Devil Motors makes powerful cars. They came out with a car named the Devil 16. The Devil 16 is a very fast car with a powerful engine. Then there's the Peterbilt Company. This company built a truck with three jet engines. The truck can do a quarter mile in only 6.5 seconds. The truck also can go up to a speed of 376 miles per hour before its two parachutes unfold and spread open. Paul prays that Christians in Ephesus will understand that God is the one who gives them strength and might. This strength comes from Jesus. Jesus sends his Holy Spirit to his followers to give them his strength. This strength is more powerful than any jet engine or magic. He finished his prayer by assuring them that Christ has subdued everything. In this lesson we will discuss following points. Point 1. A prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Point 2. What did Paul request the believers to do? Seeing as God does. Point number 3. Participating in the power of resurrection, understanding the supremacy of Jesus. Point number 4. Epilogue, Jesus, the head of the church. Point number 1. A prayer and thanksgiving. Paul tells the Ephesians that he is happy to hear that they are growing strong in their faith in God. Their love for each other grows stronger, too. Paul also tells the Ephesians that he prays for them. Paul had heard that the Ephesians were growing in love and faith. The joy of hearing that news moved him to pray, giving thanks to God. He also interceded in their favor, an intercession that would continue later in the letter in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 21. The Apostle encouraged us to follow his example, pray without ceasing. What Paul means is that we must thank God for everything he does for us. We must take all our problems and worries to God. We must ask his advice. We must not be strangers to God. We must choose to be his children and to allow him to lead us. Too often we pray to God only when we are in trouble or when we need something. Paul teaches us a different idea about prayer. Paul believes that prayer is an important part of being a Christian. He invites us to pray more. When we pray, Paul encourages us to ask God to help other people. Point number two. What did Paul request the believers to do? His request number one. Seeing as God does. God will give us wisdom if we ask for it. He will also reveal the things we cannot understand by ourselves. He will remove the veil from our spiritual eyes and will enlighten us with his knowledge. We will see as God does. Paul wants his readers to remember that they are God's special treasure. Paul wants the Ephesians to understand their worth in God's eyes. Paul prays for the Ephesians to know God's great power. God's power can't be compared with anything else. His power works for us who believe. His request number two to the believers is, participating in the power of resurrection. Paul wants his readers to know what God has done for them. Paul starts by talking about two things that show that God is very powerful. First one is the time when Jesus woke up from the dead and the second one is the time when Jesus sat next to God on his throne in heaven. When we accept that Jesus woke up from the dead, we also will have hope that our loved ones will wake up from the dead at the time that Jesus comes back. We also can look to Jesus today for all the blessings he promised. One of these promised blessings is the Holy Spirit in our lives. Jesus was resurrected and exalted. 
He controls all the power in heavens and earth. Point number three. Understanding the supremacy of Jesus. Jesus is sovereign far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age but also in the one to come. In Acts 19 verse 11 to 20, we read the story about the seven sons of Siva. This story shows us that Ephesus at the time of Paul was an important place for people who wanted to learn how to use magic. During New Testament times, people in the kingdom of Rome believed in spirits. The Roman people believed that spirits control every part of life. A magician's job was to figure out which spirits were helpful and which spirits hurt people. The magician learned how the spirits worked. The magician also knew about the different skills and strengths that the spirits had. With this knowledge, a magician controlled the spirits and commanded them to do things for him. The magician used special jewels or words to command the spirits. With the right words, a magician could heal a person that an evil spirit made sick. Or a magician could ask a spirit to help someone win a horse race. The reference to invoking a name had a special meaning for the Ephesians. The sons of Siva tried to expel demons by invoking Jesus' name, although they didn't believe in him. Invoking the name of deities or infernal powers was common at that time. It was a practice documented in the books of witchcraft that the Ephesians destroyed. That's why Paul emphasized that Jesus' name is above any demonic power. Only he can liberate us from Satan. Last point epilogue. Jesus, the head of the church. Jesus is more powerful than anyone or anything in heaven or on earth. God put all things under the control of Jesus. All things include Satan and his evil angels. Paul also tells us that God made Jesus the leader of the church. God gave Jesus success over all evil powers. God promises the church that it will, also, win against Satan and his evil army. Jesus gives the church everything it needs. God gives Jesus to the church. The church is joined so close with Jesus. That's why the Bible says that the church is the same as Jesus' own body. How can we, as Christians, know Jesus our King? How can we experience God's strength in our lives? Paul doesn't write down for us any special plan to follow or thing we must do to make this experience happen. But Paul gives us a hint in his prayer report about how we can get God's strength. Paul prays that God will help the Ephesian Christians to know him and his strength. Paul believes that God will answer his prayer. We see that Paul believes that any experience or knowledge we get about God comes because we have a strong prayer life. Dear listener, I pray for you so that you get a strong prayer life in order to have more God's strengths in your life. This is the end of this lesson. God bless you.